there are a, a number of important things that happened here. Um, in 1777, the uh, war was raging throughout New Jersey, the Revolutionary War, and um, uh, the uh, legislature, the, the General Assembly for the state, had to move throughout New Jersey to avoid the fighting. And so at one point, they were here in Haddonfield, and this was their headquarters, uh, and they met uh, upstairs in the assembly room um, and a number of important things happened when they did that they um, for example officially read into the minutes uh, the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence right. um, and then the other thing they did they uh, approved of the great seal of the state of New Jersey so when you see the state flag you see a, a, it's a yellow flag New Jersey flag with a seal on it that was um, approved of and sort of officially became New Jersey's symbol here when the legislature met here. And the last thing is they officially uh, changed the, um, the wording in their, their documentation that uh, every, every time where the word colony appeared, it was replaced with state. So a lot of people say, well, in a way, this is where New Jersey became a state and no longer a colony, because officially, this is where they did those things. They entered those things in the minutes. So um, the way it's set up now, it's um, uh, as a tavern, giving you an idea of what it might have been like in the 18th century. Right. And if you come in here, this is, um, the furniture here is reproduction, but it's based on this dark green bench back here, which is of the period. So this gives you an idea of what a tavern would have been like at the time. And um, there were a couple different kinds of dining rooms, depending on um, sort of what you wanted and who you were and so on. So um, you have a little bit of privacy in these uh, benches, but a more public dining room is across the hall here. So this would have been a room for anyone and everyone. And when you see uh, images of the period, you see everybody drinking from the punch bowl. Uh, over here is um, uh, a reproduction of what would have been um, a, a bar, basically. This is where you kept the liquor safe back here, and you could lower that so that you could secure the, um, the space. How did they get in? Um, there's a, a door over here. Oh, and then you go underneath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So you usually had the thing, and then they have a thing on top yeah. that opens, you know, that's right. that's up right. and down, but I didn't see it on this one. That's right. That's and they right. just go in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in here is a little formal dining room. And so if there were ladies present, they would come in here, not in the more raucous, formal, uh, I'm sorry, public dining room, they would be in here. Also, um, VIPs, like members of the legislature, wouldn't be in here. Are you, um, are you okay? Are you okay? This is Linda. Linda, Hi. how's it going? I'm, it's going well, uh, and you? Okay, and you? Good. I'm John. Explaining that just the, the good people the good who really people. do this are just coming back from lunch. Oh. So, um, <laughs> Uh, I think you, you just have been by a lot and wanted a, a walk through, right? No, I, my, my days off, I just go to go into different okay. historic sites. Oh, okay. It's like my third one today. Oh, <laughs> where were you earlier today? Um, I was at the Burlington County Historical Society. Okay. And then there's another one I forget, but the um, you know. Okay, this is number three. Okay. Do you have anything planned for after? Yeah, well, I got to listen to the car, obviously. Oh, wow. I might go to the um, Burlington County Prison. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Wow, we're glad you're here. So as Margaret said, this is uh, this is a dining area that would be available for the upper sort, the upper class. So this is where men and women are going to dine together. Um, you can tell it's kind of like the fancy dining room. This is, you know, there are tablecloths, imported dinnerware, glassware. Uh, the menu here is a little bit more sophisticated. Of course, it's going to cost you more to find yourself seated in a room like this. So, oh. feel free to ask questions if you have them. No problem. <clears throat> I'm not sure where you started or where you uh... Just right at the end since you went to that first story there and oh, around. Oh, okay, okay. So if, if you're going to be serving this many meals, then you have to have a kitchen of substantial size. And this, of course, being the kitchen here. Um, a fairly modern kitchen for that day. The Having a crane versus a lug pole that would have gone through the chimney area. So. I'm sure Mrs. Creighton, who was the first innkeeper's wife here, was happy to have the, the, the latest gadgets, so to speak. She has a rotisserie where she can spit a piece of meat and uh, continue to cook it throughout the day. And of course, washing station and our vegetables, fruits, and so forth uh, would have been kept below in the uh, cellar. Can everyone that you see here? Yeah, yeah, she started with this room. Okay, okay, but, so you got a little bit yeah. of a feel for what this yeah. room was. So once again, another dining experience, but it's certainly not your upper upper class. This is your, your working class that's going to be found here. So it's a much different experience. The food is going to be... Um, less fancy, I suppose. Um, certainly the accommodations are, are a little more uh, intimate in that you could be sitting with or across from folks that you don't know and so forth. So, very different experience. Do you have time to come upstairs? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Plenty of time. traveler or if someone were passing through Haddonfield and in need of an overnight uh, stay, they might find themselves in a room like this. So um, you could find as many as perhaps, oh, I would say 10 to 12 men sleeping in a room like this, sharing bed space. And certainly when beds were no longer available, then you could find yourself sleeping on the floor, so. Um, Especially if they're army or something, they're used to that anyway. That's right, that's <laughs> right, yeah. And having a roof over your head, a substantial roof is better than sleeping under a fly or a tree, so um, yeah, having that opportunity to sleep in a tavern would be a, a good thing, certainly. So this is one of our newest acquisitions, the bed. Uh, so we are working our way toward pulling it together to be appropriate, which we have work to do. <laughs> And of course, the room you see here is, is much fancier in its appearance, with good reason. This is um, the innkeeper's room, so this is where Mr. and Mrs. Creighton and their daughter Mary would have slept here, perhaps taken their meals here. Uh, if they had guests, their own friends visiting, this is where they would entertain family and friends uh, when they're not working throughout the tavern, and that would have been most of the time anyway. So. Um, the furnishings here are 
uh, not original to the tavern, but were said to have been made at the close of the 17th century and beginning of the 18th century. So. Mm -hmm. cool. And we're not sure how this room was used. We use it for display today. Um, but it might have been used for lodging for, for people of means. If there was a family that was traveling, they may have found themselves staying in this particular space or if uh, it was a gentleman who had additional coin in their haversack they might find themselves here as well so so in the display cabinet most of what you see is related to food that might be found in the tavern and of course um, we hosted a few uh, folks here, we hosted a gentleman portraying Hercules, and um, you may know of Hercules. Hercules was uh, President Washington's personal chef. So, um, and the middle one is of Thomas Jefferson, and he spoke with us on occasion about the uh, his love for good wine and macaroni and cheese. So, he had a pretty refined palate there. I like this French food. Never had French. <laughs> no? Well, you, you know, you can walk right into town. They have a crepe shop, and the crepes are really good there. Some of them they uh, do with, you know, like ice cream, and they're, they have dessert crepes as well as lunch crepes, and they're really good. The room that you see here is the largest room in the entire building. Um, the original space was from this wall to a wall that was just about where that steel beam is today. And it's here where New Jersey's newly formed government met for two and a half full sessions in the year of 1777. So this served as a meeting room where there was, I'm sure, a lot of discussion and eventually votes were taken on various issues. The most important issue, of course, was that thing called the Revolutionary War. How was New Jersey going to raise a militia, um, feed them, clothe them, arm them, and so forth? Um, but it was also an opportunity to uh, flush out the details of this newly formed government that had been established here in New Jersey. So um, we know that while meeting here, New Jersey's copy of the Declaration of Independence arrives and is read into the state minutes that happens here. The Great Seal of New Jersey that we find on our state flag was finalized and adopted here. And it was in September um, that the vote was taken to remove, officially remove the word colony and replace it with the word state. And you know that, that that was a big move. That was putting putting them in harm's way. Um, soon thereafter, it was determined that the seated government, which was here, needed to pack up and get out of the way of the enemy. And so they did just that. They packed up. They retreated north. And it was probably a good thing because the British were um, eventually just a few weeks later marching through Haddonfield into Philadelphia. And apparently there were about 2,000 of them that passed through, perhaps right under those windows that you see here. So. Last week I went to the old Barracks Museum. Ah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, that that's, was really uh, good. That's, a, that's a fun They went right from the, um, that, the French Indian War mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the Revolutionary yep. War, right yep. in between. And yep. Been around a long time. Yeah long time. Well, the oldest part of the building, Margaret may have shared with you, the oldest part of the building here was built in 1742. But it doesn't really get that punch in history, if you will, until 1777 when the General Assembly meets here. So that's what puts this building on the map. So what questions do you have for me? Uh, mm, no, really. Nothing you can think yeah, of. Yeah, no, but it's 
And it's really a strange to see where the way was set up as a tavern back then, mm -hmm. you know. In the Old West you see a tavern, and that's kind of modern today, it's just, man, you know, it's like just these rooms and that, yeah. little tiny bar. Yeah. Well, a tavern at that time could, would offer both lodging and yeah. food and drink. Yeah. So if you're talking about an, uh, an inn, you're talking about overnight lodging. If you're talking about a pub, you're talking about food and drink. But if you're talking about, about a tavern, tavern, it was both. It's both. Yeah, lodging, food, and drink. And so uh, this was a, a fairly substantial in size tavern. So it's a big place. Yeah. Big place. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you.